The DV5 framework has three new updates and these updates are quite exciting. The first one is keyboard navigation. Now keyboard navigation is key because it is very important when it comes to making your site accessible. Now keyboard navigation is about navigating your website without the mouse. So you need to be able to go around your website without the use of a mouse. So let me show you how this works. So over here, I'm on this BBC website. So to activate it, you need to click on shift tab. Okay. Now when you start clicking the tab key, you notice now that this is jumping to everywhere where there is a clickable item. So right now it's on here where it says Europe. And if I click again, it's up now over here to the top. So if I click now on tab, it just pretty much keeps going to a possible link. Now, if I go back and I need to navigate, I just need to hold down the shift key and this will navigate back to the top navigation links. For example, you can see now I'm on bite size, sounds, iPlayer, and so on. So let's say I want to go to iPlayer. All I need to do is to click on tab. If I need to go the other direction, I click on shift and then tab. So as you can see, it is very, very easy to use. If I need to go now onto iPlayer, I can either, you know, scroll down here if I need to see anything else. And this is by using my down arrows and my up arrows. And if I need to go into the iPlayer itself, I just need to hit enter. And this now takes me to iPlayer. Now, I was able to do this without the use of a mouse. So we now have this feature on SiteCrafter. All right, so over here, I have a website I've gone ahead and installed SiteCrafter. We are on version six. And for those of you who haven't used it yet to install it, it's very easy. All you have to do is to click on add new theme. And then you want to come over here on upload theme. Next, you want to make sure that you drag and drop the latest version of SiteCrafter, which is 6.0.2, drag and drop it here like that, and then click on install now. But in this case, I'm not going to click install now because I've already gone ahead and installed it. So when I come back over here on themes, you notice that this is our latest one. And if I click here, it's telling us our version is 6.0.2. Great. All right. So once you install it and activate it, you're pretty much good to go. All right, so let's see how we can activate this. So what we need initially is a page which has some content. So I've already gone ahead and created a page with some content on it. And here it is. So if I start clicking on shift tab, you notice now that it has gone all the way down here to WordPress and it has a nice border around it, meaning it's something that I can click on. If I click on tab, you notice now that we are here on our main navigation here. Okay, so now I'm going to click again on, on tab and notice now that when I click tab, this is now moving around and now I am on edit with Divi and now I'm over all the way to the right where it says howdy over here. So as you can see, as soon as I click on tab, it's taking me through my site. So right now I'm clicking on tab. If I need to move back again, I can click on shift tab and now it takes me back. Okay, so I can continue doing this and now every time I have something which is clickable, it'll just go to that area and it'll show a nice boundary over it. So right now we are on explore our sites. If I click again, it's going to go to the next button here and, and so on. If I need to navigate around my website, I can just click on my up arrow and this will help me navigate on my site. Okay, so I'm going to hit escape and pretty much that's gone. So we have this as soon as you install the child theme, you have this feature right away on your websites. Now, why is this important? Well, first of all, a child theme is important when you're designing your websites because there might come a time where you want to perhaps maybe add some code to your PHP to make it even more functional or you want to add some CSS. So if you don't use a child theme, when Divi updates to a newer version, it will just pretty much get rid of all your code. So this is why we need a child theme. Secondly, the features that I'm showing you right now are all baked into the child theme, which means every time you build a website, you're going to have all these features. So it is really, really awesome. Okay. So let's move on to the next feature. Now, the next feature is all our hover states. Now, hovering on our websites is very, very important. And also for accessibility purposes, it is very, very important. Okay, so I want to go ahead now and click on edit this page because I want to go in and add a few areas where we can add our hover effect. Okay, so let's say we want to hover over this. I'm going to click on this gear icon 
I'm going to come all the way here to advanced CSS ID and classes and my hover class here is I'm going to start off with hover glow. So all I have to do is to type in hover dash and then glow. Okay. So what this does now is when I hover over this, you can see straight away that it has a glow around it. Okay. Pretty simple. Okay. So this helps you when you're navigating on your site, you can just everything that's going on here. Okay, great. So there's hover glow. There's all hover scale. So I'm just going to get rid of that and then just add scale. Did you see that? So when I hover over it, it's scaling. So for this to really work, you need content whereby if you add, let's say a background color here, in fact, you know what? I don't need to do that. I'm just going to add a color here in my class and I'm just going to call this lighter. So you can see here we have a boundary there and I'm also going to add some padding and I'm going to say padding dash L. Okay, so now we have all our content here and it's looking great. I'm now going to save and let's do a quick preview. Okay, great. So now when I scroll down to this area, you can see when I mouse over it, it grows and that's the main effect. If I need to add a glow onto it, I can also add a glow. So I can say hover glow. Let's save that. And then back over here, let's refresh this. Now you can see we have a glow around it. So this is something that you can add as you are designing your website. Okay, so let's talk about the next feature. The next feature here, and in fact, before I go to the next feature, we also have a hover dock and hover border. So I can, you know, pretty much show a border on hover. Now the hover dock is quite important if you want to just add something to you know your buttons your or your existing buttons so let's head over to this button here i'm going to click on it and then i'm going to come over here id and classes and i'm going to call this hover dark dash d a r k like that and then i'm going to go ahead and save now this is really cool if you want to add something that just shows that you're hovering over a button so you can see there it's a slight dark color okay so that's something that you may want to use you know as you're designing your websites it's pretty cool but if you have a lighter background i mean it's more prominent but that's something that you can add to your buttons or your blurbs or anything that you may you may want to show okay now let's move on to the next item now the next thing is just an update to our naming system. So before we used to type in like, for example, radius large, and then it would be like the whole word large. So as time goes on, you're going to notice that it is going to pretty much fill up our space here where we add our classes. So to make things easier for us, I've now shortened all this to wherever there is the word small, you can just replace small with S or if there is large, it's just L. If it's extra large, it's X. Okay. So pretty much whenever you see those values, that is what we're going to be using instead. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add, let's say, oh, in fact, let's just go into this button here. So my first example is I'm going to come over here to advanced and add our margin. So instead of saying margin top large, I'm going to say margin dash top dash L. Okay. So now this is the shortened way. Whereas before it was the full word large. Okay. Now this also works. If I need to go and make it small, you can see there the size is now small and for medium, it's going to be M. So before, as I mentioned, it was medium like that. So this now has been updated to just the M same applies to the padding. If I come over here, go to advanced CSS ID and classes. If I say padding, it's now going to be padding L. And that's going to be large. Now I know we can't see the padding here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say lighter or light. So we can just have a light background. So you can now see that our padding has been applied pretty much across everything here. So at any point, if I need to change it, maybe I want to make it medium. I can just put M and now it has gone to padding medium. So as you can see, this is going to make things very, very easy for us as we are adding all our classes, as we're designing our website. So this is going to save us a lot of real estate on our CSS class. Now there's also something that I may want to mention here. As soon as you install the latest version, because we have keyboard navigation, Every time you're going to go on something that's clickable, you're going to get this boundary. I hope it's not something that's annoying for you. In fact, I guess this is something that 
you know, is also really good as we're designing because this will tell us exactly where we are as we're designing. So hence this border right here. But of course, if it's something that you don't like or you don't want to see in the actual builder itself, then I can work on a, an update where I can get rid of it. So just let me know in the comments box below if, it, if this is something that you're not really a fan of. Okay, now moving on. Of course, if you have designed your website using SiteCrafter version 6.0.1, you're going to have some issues when it comes to the update. For example, this is Divi University and this is my dashboard. So you can see here, everything is pretty much reset because it was using 6.0.1. Now we are on 6.0.2, which has the new naming system. So what I'll need to do now is to go into each and every one of these. For example, I'm on this one here. I can come over here to advanced. I know it's a bit annoying, but that's the best that I could do. So at the moment, you can see my class here says, padding medium all i need to do is to go in and remove the word medium and voila just like that with the m it's now working so all i have to do now is to copy my class and just add it to the rest of them like that or i can just click on this one here and then just remove most of the word medium and then i'm left with an m and then I'm going to do this on the final one. So you're going to find that on most of the places that you've used this, it's going to be there. All right. So now I want to add a bit of space above, I mean, between my text here and my icons. So I'm going to go into my row settings, advanced ID and classes. Again, you can see here, it says margin top large. It needs to be margin top L. Okay. So now you can see my spacing now has been added again i'm going to do the same thing here come over here and this time i'm going to set this to margin top small so making sure sk is there margin top and this one here is small so i'm just going to say s then here is my main heading so for my heading text if i come over here again you can see it says heading large so there we go i'm going to set this to heading l now you're going to notice something our bold here is not working the reason is we have changed the font naming system altogether so i don't need the margin bottom here so i'm just going to get rid of that okay great so now all i have is my heading l so when it comes to our font weights there is a specific naming system which is your 100 200 300 all the way to 900 so in order for us to start applying our font weights to our fonts this is where we need to now say font dash in this case, I want 800. So that's how it's going to make it bold. So if I want to make it slightly bold, I can go with font dash 700 and so on. And same applies here. My text here, if I want to make it a bit larger, I can just say text dash large. Oh, in fact, <laughs> I can't say text that large. It's just text L or I can say XL. But for that to work, I just need to remove the SK class to it. Okay. But that's a bit too much. So I think I'm going to go with L. Okay. So now we can see now it's really taking shape. If I need to change this to medium, I can just go like that. And now it's on medium. Okay. But I think this looks, in fact, I'll leave it on medium. So that's the main change that we have. So our font weights, they're all going to be controlled by font dash 100 to 900. And for all our sizes, we're replacing all the complete words. So medium is now M, large is now small is now S, extra small and so on. So let's say you want to make this really, really, really big. So here's what you need to do. So here we have heading L. So we can say XL, right? So that's quite big. But if you want to make it bigger, we can go to XL. You see that? If you want to make it even bigger, 3XL. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but as you can see, it goes on and on. But of course, 4XL is a bit too much. I didn't even format it, but chances are you're not going to be using 4XL. So maybe 2XL can work, but in our case here, I'm just going to leave this at XL or in fact, even L. Okay. So these are the main features. I'm now going to update the reference. It's going to have all these updates. These are the major ones that I've just mentioned, but there's a lot more tweaks that I've done. There's also some errors that I found in the code. All the errors are now fixed. So this is quite stable. 
So you can go ahead and start using this right away. If you're a lifetime user or a lifetime member, all these updates are absolutely free. So you don't have to pay any extra to this. And for those of you that haven't purchased Sidecraft Framework yet, I highly recommend you do so because this is going to be child theme that you're going to need for every single website you're going to be designing. So if you're an agency, this can be added or installed onto every website you're going to be building. So it is very, very crucial. As you can see, the features that are being added to this are very, very important to each and every web design build. All our fonts here are all fluid. You don't need to go in and start adjusting all your font sizes and so on. Pretty much everything is baked into the child theme. Now, there are also more features coming up very, very soon because Accessibility, as I mentioned, is going to be very, very key in terms of designing our websites and it's going to be mandatory, especially here in Europe. So accessibility is going to be built in. We're also going to be having quite a lot of features. Now, DV is going to be releasing variables. Site Crafter is going to work well together with our variables and it's going to make the designing of websites <clears throat> super, super awesome. So if you haven't purchased this, go ahead, go to sitecrafter.com and purchase your lifetime license. This will also give you access to any future, any future courses or any future child themes that I'm going to be creating. I'm just waiting for DV5 to go out of alpha. And once it's really, really stable, you're going to be seeing a lot of products that I'll be creating. Now, once this lifetime option goes, the pricing is going to be pretty much a yearly pricing. So make sure that you grab your lifetime license while the offer is available. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments box below. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Take care.